everyone. I want to thank Ms. Greta Fenner, Managing Director of the Basel Institute on Governance, for opening the conference. Thanks, Greta. I am Federico Paisano from the Basel Institute on Governance. I will share this conference. Today on the screen with me, we have two other members of the Working Group on Criminal Finances and Cryptocurrencies. Yung Ki Yu from Interpol and Borja Pastor from Europol. We are really proud to be bringing together such a large and varied number of participants, more than 3,000 from more than 150 different countries, to exchange information about virtual asset-based money laundering and other crypto-enabled crimes. I know you're all eager to listen to our uh, lineup of speakers and what they want to share. I don't need to tell you how cryptocurrencies, in all their forms and typologies, are relevant nowadays from uh, a niche subject obscure to almost anyone to a true revolution that which is quickly spreading from the newest way to launder the money to the legal tender of a country. I think we simply cannot afford to miss to dismiss the fact that cryptocurrencies are here to stay. We don't want just to wait and see as uh, passive observers. We want to understand better. We want to share knowledge. We want to try and shape the legal framework so that this revolution can flourish while we curb all the possible negative outcomes. We will explore today in this session open to everybody, the newest developments in the world of cryptocurrencies, like for example, non-fungible tokens, decentralized finance, which are quite popular words today, and how the regulatory bodies are reacting to them. We will see how the different blockchains generate a tremendous amount of data which can be analyzed with the proper tools. And finally, is the recovery of crypto assets really that difficult? We will reply to these questions and many more through the analysis of some real cases. And now let me hand it over to Yung Ki Yu of Interpol, who will tell us more about the working group and how it has evolved through the years. The floor is, is yours, JK. Thank you, Federico. I hope all of you can hear me clearly. If not, please feel free to stop me for a better communication. Uh, let me share my screen for a second. Okay, I believe now you can see the screen. So hello, colleagues from the world. My name is Yu Chonggi. I'm connecting from Singapore, so good evening from here. Uh, I represent Interpol Financial Crimes Unit, and personally, I'm a seconded police officer from Korea. Uh, given around five minutes for partners' presentation, let me briefly introduce you how we three organizations have established our partnership in order to mitigate uh, the threat of money laundering posed by virtual assets. So this is about the history, and speaking of which, the reason why we gather here today. Uh, I feel I don't have to reiterate how technologies become continuously uh, more advanced and so the ways in which criminals utilize them for their illicit and illegal activities among those virtual assets are already changing the landscape of the criminal on the world. So let me show you. So this is a mind map answers arising from the audience last year's conference. Uh, and I could get a distinct idea of what people are in need uh, we wanted to know how to trace and how to regulate and how to proceed into international investigation under the flow of uncertainty. There is a clear consensus that virtual asset pose a money laundering and terrorism financing uh, threat. The cases nowadays we see, they are showing that money laundering can easily take place inside the virtual environment, offering high levels of anonymity and low levels of detection by uh, each character. So we, three organizations, we have been concerned about the seriousness of those threat and note the increasing use of virtual asset in the criminal fields. The use of cryptocurrencies pose new and distinctive changes to uh, crime investigation as does the seizure and confiscation of the criminal procedure. So we recognize that all relevant stakeholders worldwide could benefit from uh, the exchange of information and knowledge with peers from each other. Therefore, 
in September 2016, the Basel Institute on Governance, Europol, and Interpol have formalized the, uh, the establishment of a tripartite partnership to fight against the virtual asset-based money laundering. Based on those partnerships, uh, we became a good friend, finally, and we agreed to hold an annual conference started from 2017. Uh, personally, I joined Interpol in 2019, January, and I fly to The Hague in the Europol headquarters and joined from the third conference and happened to meet Borja and Federico, good friends. And at the end of the day, I was informed that I have to prepare the next one. So uh, to make a long story short, the last year's conference has successfully held in online platform for the first time, joined by around 2,000 participants from uh, 100 34 countries who are responsible for cryptocurrency investigation. Uh, now, this year, I understand that thanks to this year's main organizer, the Basel Institute, we expanded its scale by having more than 4,000 participants this year, which also means we take a turn uh, to organize the annual conference based on our tri-party working group. So next year, it will be Europol again. And having annual conference, we aim to gather, analyze, and exchange up-to-date information regarding the use of virtual asset as a means of money laundering and investigation and recovery of proceeds. Uh, this three-dimensional approach, this is a concept model produced and introduced from last year's conference. Our conference has participated by the representatives from law enforcement, private sectors, academia, financial institute, international organizations, and all relevant important stakeholders in order to increase our responsiveness against the virtual asset uh, enabled crimes, because we need a holistic approach to respond to this, this new modus operandi. Especially, we need tools to trace and rules to investigate and prosecute and active operations. So far, I have summarized about the history, and now I believe it is more clear why we are here today. In this slide, this is the recommendations we have come to conclusion last year. I propose let us uh, think about how it worked in your working field during last year, and let's see how many of them are still valid further. Uh, my job, I'm in the position to uh, receive a case request from 195 Interpol member countries and trying to uh, provide a customized solution to proceed international uh, investigations. In this morning, also, I found a certain crypto fraud uh, received in my account, and indeed, it has been significantly increasing just during a couple of years. So uh, I will say the future is already here, while our response is not evenly distributed. So we hope to create a network of practitioners and experts in this field who can collectively establish best practices and provide assistance and recommendations inside and outside the conference. And having the fifth conference today, we expect uh, this will work more tangible and feasible. So thank you for your attention. And uh, let me hand it over to the Europol partner, Mr. Borja Pastor. Uh, Borja, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Yeki. Could you hear me? I hope so. <laughs> Their colleagues. Uh, their colleagues, their delegates, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and good, and good morning. I'm connected from the Netherlands, so good afternoon from here. Uh, as head of the financial right team of the European Financial and Economic Right Center, the EFEC in Europol, it is my privilege and pleasure to welcome you here today on behalf of Europol and as a part of the three-party working group. We are pleased to have you with us to participate and share experience in our fifth global conference on criminal finance and cryptocurrency. So thank you for coming. Thank you for connecting. And uh, wow, more than 3,000 participants or registrations. Uh, this is an amazing number. This amazing number indicates how relevant is the topic of the abuse of cryptocurrencies for money laundry purposes. What we refer as virtual asset-based money laundry and also for other cryptocurrencies enabled crime. So this is a clear uh, yeah, clear evidence, the how important, how the relevant is the topic here. 
However, the figures of the participations, the, the participations are not the only indication, but also the high professional level of the participants and speakers attending this conference. You will see the level of the of the of the speakers. You will see the level of the of the presentations, and also I hope that you will be able to share details and content details with the rest of participants. This is a solid ground and the right environment to deepen the dialogue and look for grass cutting and flexible responses to the identified threats. One of the aim of the three-party working group is to be the bridge between cybercrime experts and financial investigators. That was the origin of this uh, initiative. We want to be the bridge between the technical side of cryptocurrencies while focusing on the practical aspects of their abuse in money laundry activities. Other objective of this working group is to create a network of practitioners by maintaining a common forum for money laundry and cybercrime investigators, FIUs, asset recovery experts, judicial authorities, and all the related actors working in this field. I know that the achievement of the last objectives is not easy since we are in the need to do it virtually. So for the reason, uh, Europol and the three-party working group hope to be able to organize a physical conference next year in the Europol headquarters to reinforce this objective. The interest in the event is the best indication, ha as I told you before, for the success of the joint initiative. I am convinced that both the quality and the content of the presentations and discussions will be in line with your interests and will reflect on the most relevant and current issues in the field. I don't want to take more time from the presentations and uh, your experience sharing. I don't want to take more time of the speakers because they are the most important part in this conference. So to conclude, I would like to say that it is grat gratifying to know that the agenda of the conference uh, covers a, way, a wide range of very interesting topics related to criminal finance and cryptocurrencies. You, you, will, you will see, you can see on the agenda that the topics are really diverse and uh, almost all the, all the, um, the aspects uh, touched in this field are dealt during the, during the conference. So for that reason, I hope that you will enjoy and use the potential of the presentations, the speakers, and the professional environment of this conference. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your interest. And see you online. Thank you again. Thank you very much, JK and Borja.